today we're in Rainy Bay, Banfield, um, in this beautiful location. Um, and, and we're at one of our green gravel transects. Um, so a site that we've chosen to uh, test some of our kelp forest restoration techniques. But today we're doing a bit of a different research. Uh, we're dropping down eDNA um, sampling frames. So if you can see here, this is the frame and it holds these three filters. And these three filters will place um, along our transect line, uh, along this area that um, we're hoping to restore kelp in, and we're taking a baseline um, survey of the biodiversity. And what happens is these filters capture um, genetic material, DNA, from the waters around um, in this area. So that can be DNA from fish, like um, herring, like rockfish. It can be DNA from invertebrates and sea stars and um, sea urchins. And so we'll place these frames along the transect line and collect uh, DNA for 24 hours. So for them, from this, we hope to really understand how our restored kelp forests um, in, impact the biodiversity of the areas um, we're studying. So after 24 hours, we're removing these frames um, and taking out these filters. And these filters have been capturing um, that genetic material in the water uh, over 24 hours to see that biodiversity in the water. And so we'll preserve the filters, we'll, we'll put them in ethanol and trans transport them back to OceanWise's conservation genetics lab, um, where our lab technicians will run, th run them through an analysis that basically tells us exactly um, what is there. And it's a simple system that will allow us to deploy um, this eDNA survey in any area that we restore kelp in. This is hopefully an easy way to see how kelp forest restoration improves biodiversity in surrounding water. Well, it'd really be nice for you guys to be planting some more kelp for us because that helps the herring and that ends up helping the salmon out and then that ends up helping me out. <laughs>